When using guide rails and a chainsaw to make flat, square, rectangular prisms out of wind-fallen timber, it really helps if you know enough to quarter cut mill the tree. It may seem like a lot of trouble to go to, but quarter cut milling means that out of each quarter you can cut a rectangular prism that won't cup or warp or twist or bow and the sides will remain parallel as it dries out. Now, when I began the first big project, I didn't realise that, and I spent an enormous amount of time painfully and slowly drawing a train saw backwards through a 24 foot long tree to make four 4 by 2 purlins. And by the time I'd cut them, they'd twisted and warped and changed shape because I didn't realise that wood shrinks along the growth rings. So you have to quarter cut mill timber or it's going to be pretty useless. In my particular application, the fact that the uh, straight wood had a few bends in it didn't matter too much. Considering what I wanted to use it for, which was to put a veranda all the way around the lawn locker. And then enclose a sleep out bunk room for the children on the southwest corner. I don't really think anybody notices that the top hat purlins have warps in them. Regardless of how easy it is to see here. If you've got time on your hands, even small pieces of wood, as anything that's longer than two and a half feet so that you can mount the guide rail on it, is capable of being turned into flat sided timber. At the cost of some chainsaw bar lube oil, some two stroke oil, some unleaded petrol, and you make a bit of chain, uh, chainsaw dust which turns into mulch and becomes topsoil on top of the rocks which the farmers have left after the sheep. And with no television, no computer, what else are you going to do with your time? Keep pulling the chainsaw backwards until your back makes you stop. As you can see, very thin wood can be produced. This was a particularly odd job, it was a display bench, the better to attempt to sell. Hand carved, hand painted, chainsaw milled boomerangs. These ones were made of yellow box. It was a phase I went through. But I still have chainsaw milled timber for making boomerangs. This is a piece of one and a half mil red cedar. I've sent that stuff through the mail as postcards. So you can get a bit obsessive with chainsaw milled timber. Which may be considered a bit obsessive, but you know, as the teenagers say, on the other hand, I have different fingers. Here we have a 1995 vintage, I call it Old Faithful, cross boomerang. Uh, it's remnants of the first two I ever made, and uh, yeah, it flies. Here we have a photograph of one of its early test flights. And this is a picture I particularly like. There are eight hard-footed feral land lice in that picture, eight sheep, and seven sheep have got enough curiosity to stop eating and look up and pay attention to a boomerang flying. Who would have thought? Sheep are curious enough to look at a boomerang. This is one of the gaily painted yellow box boomerangs. 
from the earlier triptych. Here's a different shot. Quite an interesting trick to throw your boomerang, pick up your camera, find the boomerang at 5 power telephoto, focus frame and get the shot and then duck because the boomerang, if it's a good one, is probably going to be coming back somewhere close to where you're standing. And these are hardwood boomerangs. These have sharp edges and they're right on the weight limit and they'll probably break a bird's wing and they'll mm, they hit you in the head with one of these full tilt. You expect to be cut to the bone. Here's the biggest chainsaw milled asymmetric hubless auto rotating rotary wing sail plane that I've ever built and as you can see it's got chainsaw tooth marks on the bottom of the blade. This curved shelf and this curved shelf are the offcuts from chainsaw milling the slab to cut that boomerang from. So the auto rotating rotary wing sailplane that you can make out of a bent stick with a chainsaw can fly in a 20 mile an hour wind and it has a 60 to 1 glide ratio. For comparison here we have the industrial returning boomerang lithium iron polymer batteries the big ones three channel radio control the little ones two channel um, infrared control coaxial contra rotating twin engines twin rotors and this will go out and turn around and come back Eha! How much technology have you got to have to build that? How much pollution? When I saw it for a hundred dollars in the main street, I couldn't resist it. There it is, it's actually off the ground. Took me a month and five hours of airtime and an awful lot of repairs. I'm probably the only person in the world who knows how to re rebuild those blades. Pink two-part automotive body bog. Sticky tape to hold the bog in position while it dries and then balance them in pairs with a skin of five minute epoxy five minute araldite I used and any wind stronger than a quarter of a mile an hour is too much for this so I make the boomerang about 80 times better than an industrial rechargeable radio controlled made of plastic and polluting chemicals type well, Whitefellas Boomerang, Chinaman's Boomerang. Somehow, I think I prefer the ones that I make with my chainsaw. To be honest, 